Hey guys, we've made a bunch of changes since last time, and we actually have a more suitable robot, so uh, let's get that in front of you guys real quick. So, uh, don't mind all the wires here real quick, but as you can see, we still have that six-wheel drivetrain from last time. One minor change we made to it is that we actually decided to switch the chains because this chain in the front was on the inside, the chain back here was on the outside. We decided to switch them just to move the motor outwards, so we'd have more space for our dumper in the middle. Now, as you can see, we've actually got the intake mechanism finally uh, planted onto here. We've extended this channel and added a support, re uh, support beam over here because we decided to take this one out on the bottom, mainly because we have more space for the uh, dumper as well as the slide mechanism down here. So it's a lot better once we put it up here. And then as you can see on the back, we've got a little structure down here for the uh, ref hubs. We'd be able to get everything within the 18 inches. So as for wiring, we'd be good once we get to that stage. Now, one of the things I want to talk to you guys about was our dumper and a couple of issues we had regarding it. So as you can see, one thing that we've added, like we mentioned last time, while we were actually filming the update video, we realized that there was indeed an issue with the roof that we actually needed one because it, well, the blocks would actually fall off. So when we tested it with the intake on from the robot, it turned out that the blocks did indeed fly out too far, but we decided to add this roof in. Initially, the roof was about this long, so like from the side, you know, it was this much, but the intake kept hitting it, so we had to trim it down to this much, but it proved to be kind of ineffective. But what we did find is that the distance from the dumper and the intake actually does matter. So the closer you are to the intake, so if like the intake is like right here, the chances of it flying out are much higher. But if you're further out here, since like there isn't much of a launch, it will like rest it here comfortably. But one of the other issues we found regarding this specifically was the fact that our dumper is actually really wide. And there was a reason why we did this. So if we take a couple of balls here, we wanted it to be able to host the balls, but also have a little bit of wiggle room here, right? So one solution that we've actually come up with is to have this uh, 2.75 and multiply that by two and get that for the actual width of the back of the plate. But then we'd have it funnel outwards so then we'd be wider out in the front than in the back. So then that way we'd be able to collect those and retain it in the back with a kind of tight base grip. But since it is circular indeed in the back, it won't be gripping too much. So this would probably be the most optimal fit and we'd be able to have the blocks not going around too much like like it is doing right now. See how much this moves? It's quite a lot, right? And there's even a spot for a third block if you're really like not careful with this. So that might be a thing. Also, we may be looking into extending this a little bit more, but that's something that we'll have to experiment in the future. So the second main mechanism that we've been working on is our hanging system and our linear lift. And this linear lift and hanging mechanisms uh, are two separate parts that we sort of eventually want to combine into a single subsystem. Um, we want to be able to score our, either our, the balls or the blocks um, using the same lift as we're going to be hanging with. So first, let me get into our lift. Here, as you can see, we have a two-stage lift um, a way, consisting of 15-inch slides. And we've decided on this um, because we've done a bit of testing and we've found that this is actually what we would uh, barely, uh, it's, bar it's actually like barely enough to get us to exactly where we need on the field. Um, it, it gets us just to that, the, the correct height to score both blocks and balls. And so, um, as you can see over here, we have an Actibotics channel that will fit precisely onto our robot. Um, and uh, in addition to the Actibotics channels, we have two custom build channels. Uh, as I may have mentioned in the intro, we are going to be using a little bit of custom parts. We have these two custom build channels, as well as these two Misumi um, slides um, going into this. So com the combination of this, we hope, will provide uh, a, a, a very sturdy surface, as well as a surface that will reach as high as, it, as we need it to reach. Do you want to actually extend that real quickly? Oh yeah, of course. So um, it'll go about um, yay big, and if we put it on a robot... You probably won't be able to yeah, see Yeah, you won't this. be able to see all of this, but it'll... It'll reach um, barely the height of the. Um, it, it'll reach barely the height of uh, of the center structure. All right. And so the and the next thing that we are working on is uh, the, the the hanging mechanism. We showed uh, I showed you guys a prototype earlier of the um, hanging mechanism in the previous video, but here we have a new and updated version. Um, in this version, we've created it with a lot more sturdy material. If you can see in the back, this is actually eighth inch aluminum. We've uh, ba we basically reinforced the entire thing. And as you can see, we've created this slight V shape. We've created this V shape so that um, we are, we, our, our goal is basically so that we can drive into the peg at any angle and this V will mechanically self-correct the robot into fitting precisely onto the hook where we can then deploy our, hang, uh, our hanging mechanism. We can deploy this pin. 
And as you can see over here, everything is very, very uh, well protected so that no contact will damage our servo because that's the one key thing that we're, we're very worried about. And uh, if you were to take a look through here, you can see that there's that same spring mechanism we were talking about. So all the tension we're riding here instead of on this really powerful servo that you can see over here. That's right. So um, there were a few questions in the chat. Um, one of the main questions on, in the chat was about the autonomous. Uh, what we were going to do with Autonomous and what um, like programs such as Euphoria, OpenCV, etc. Uh, we were going to use. Um, our, our programmer did mention this on the chat, but for this we're basically focusing on a very, very basic uh, straight line type Autonomous where we're only going to be trying to score our team marker. And uh, the reason that we sort of chose to do this as opposed to um, doing the Euphoria and all of that is because this is actually, uh, sorry, not the Euphoria, the OpenCV. Uh, I'm still uh, flustered from last year. But um, the reason we decided to do this was because we've actually, this is the first time we're using a six wheel drive and we sort of want to see the, the stability of this and we want to see the consistency of this before we go for more and more complex tasks. Um, so that's all we have for this update. Um, if you have any questions, please, please feel free to tag us at Spark Tech Education in the Twitch chat. Um, we know that this is going to be at midnight. Uh, this is at, this uh, updates at midnight, so not a lot of you will be watching it just now. But please uh, feel free to check out our uh, channel and check out um, the Twitch uh, live stream. Thank you so much.